All right, why don't we get started? Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Rosanna Garcia Ferraro. I am the Policy and Program Officer at Universal Healthcare Foundation of Connecticut. I'm moderating today's Facebook Live with Camilla and Jonathan today. Um, we're going to be talking about health equity, Husky, and our Husky for Immigrants campaign. This is an important discussion because it's another way that we can achieve, get to, and move towards universal coverage for everyone. Today's guest speakers are Camilla and Jonathan, and I'll let them introduce you themselves. Camilla? Hey, I'm sorry, took myself from you. Hey, so my name is Camilla. I'm the co-director of Connecticut Students for a Dream, one organization that works for the rights of undocumented youth and families here in Connecticut, um, undocumented and unafraid, as I like to say. Um, and I'm excited to be with you all here today. And I'll, I'll show it to, to Jonathan. Hello, everybody. Um, thank you for joining us today. My name is Jonathan Gonzalez Cruz. Um, I, my pronouns are he, him, his, el, and I have been a, a C4D member since 2016. Thank you guys. So before we begin, I just want to talk a little bit about Universal Healthcare Foundation. We um, fight for quality, affordable, equitable healthcare for all. So this, uh, this issue is very important to us as we know that oftentimes um, undocumented immigrants are left behind and left out of a lot of important um, social programs. So I'm just going to let uh, Camilla and Jonathan kick it off and fill us in on what uh, what Husky is all about, uh, what the Husky for Immigrants campaign is all about, and uh, what you guys can do to help. So uh, kick it off. Go ahead, you guys. May, may we have the next slides, please? One more. And one more, please. Sorry. All right. Um, so today, since we're going to be talking about healthcare coverage, um, we wanted to provide a little bit of context first. Um, so in Connecticut, um, there are three primary ways like people are familiar with accessing health coverage. Um, the first could be through public health insurance. Um, so this is, you know, uh, Medicaid Husky for people of low incomes, uh, Medicare for um, people over 65. Or um, another way is through getting it through private insurance, um, whether that be at your place of work or through um, an insurance agency. And um, another way is through um, the Access Health CT marketplace, which was created after the Affordable Care Act. Um, and may I have the next slide, please? And so um, say you are um, an undocumented individual in Connecticut looking for healthcare coverage for you or your family. Um, your first place that you might consider looking is private insurance. Um, um, however, in the private in in private insurance, um, you can be denied for not submitting a social security number in your application, um, which a lot of undocumented immigrants don't have um, to put in their application. And then also because there are unaffordable high deduction plans, um, even people who have them, they find it uh, very unaffordable. So if you're undocumented, private insurance plans, you know, they may be unaccessible to you, whether because you lack a social security number or you can't afford them. Um, so next you might consider an access health CT plan, um, which are subsidized um, by um, federal money. However, um, because you are undocumented immigrant, um, you are ineligible for the qualified health plan. Um, and this is because during the negotiations um, for the ACA, um, undocumented immigrants were excluded from people who qualified for them. Um, so you being an undocumented immigrant, you have a hard time accessing private insurance plans and also can't access access health CT plans. Another option you may consider um, is getting um, Connecticut's Husky program. Um, however, once again, um, because of your status, um, you are not considered what they call a qualified immigrant and in turn, you are excluded from the eligibility. Um, so as a turn, these three common ways that people get healthcare coverage are unaccessible to undocumented immigrants. And the consequence is that in Connecticut, the undocumented population experienced about a 52% uninsured rate. Um, next slide, please. Um, so a 52% uninsured rate um, versus a 5% overall uninsured rate in the state shows that within the undocumented community, um, 
there is an extreme lack of, of access to healthcare coverage. And in turn, about 53 to 68,000 undocumented individuals are uninsured, um, which is actually about a third of the total number of people uninsured in Connecticut at about 180,000. Um, so because the majority do not have access to healthcare coverage, a significant number of undocumented immigrants do not receive treatment or care when they are sick. Um, and in turn, this is a public health crisis, especially during a global pandemic when access to the healthcare system um, is vital to receiving the treatment and care people need if they are sick. And this is especially true for um, the undocumented essential workers who are constantly exposing themselves to COVID in their um, place of work. And in turn, they are risking not only catching the virus, but also being able to, not being able to go to a healthcare um, center and then receive the proper treatment and care that they deserve. Um, and I'm, now I'm gonna pass it on to Camilla to talk a little bit more about um, the Husky, uh, Husky for Immigrants. Thank you. So you can go to the next slide. Um, so we're here you know, on behalf of the Husky for Immigrants campaign. So obviously Husky is our, is our main concern, which many of you on the call here and the Zoom might be very well familiar with. So we're not gonna go over it in too much detail, but you'll see a quick overview on your screen. Um, so as Jonathan shared, Husky Health is Connecticut's Medicaid program, uh, which is the, the state-run health, health coverage program here in Connecticut. Um, as you all might be aware, Husky has four parts, um, A, B, C, and D. Um, each part you know, is for a different constituency, different age, different income level. Um, so it, it's very, you know, very given the specific population. Uh, the three biggest things that determine eligibility for you know, Husky levels or Husky programs is one's income, age, um, and potentially citizenship or immigration status. Um, all parts of Husky cover medical, behavior, dental, and visual care, and no cost to members. Um, but as Johnson said, uh, Husky, Husky, none of the Husky programs are available to folks who are undocumented, um, or most folks who, who are immigrants. So this entire program is inaccessible um, to some of, the, some of the most neediest people here in Connecticut who are undocumented immigrants. Oftentimes, new immigrants who are shut out from being able to access what is Connecticut's most affordable health coverage program. Um, it should be mentioned that Husky is funded by a mix of both state and federal funds. Um, so it's it complicated how the funding works, right? But it's, it's funded by both state Connecticut dollars and federal dollars. Um, it should also be mentioned that most undocumented immigrants do pay taxes. Um, about $145 million um, in state and local taxes um, are paid by undocumented immigrants on a yearly basis. So that's a lot, right? $145 million that goes into the state and the federal government that helps to fund these programs um, that we're being excluded from, right? So we help fund with our taxes, but we're not able to have access to these programs. So that's one of the things that we're trying to change uh, in our state is to make sure that the Husky program, which is the the best option for low-income families, right, is open to all regardless of income status so that undocumented folks and families can have the access. And I see some questions on the chat. Oh, I think we'll get to it. So you can go to the next slide. Yeah, you're right. You can go to the next slide. So Connects with Sweet Dream, um, we're part of um, a coalition, a campaign uh, over the past year. Uh, that we've come to call the Husky for Immigrants campaign that's working to do just this, that's working to expand Husky access for undocumented folks here in Connecticut. Um, you know, this comes from a belief that healthcare is a human right and your immigration status should not, should not prevent you from getting the healthcare coverage or the healthcare access that you need in order to lead healthy lives. Uh, previous work that this coalition has done, which is, you know, you see some pictures there, um, is educating our community about the need to expand Husky healthcare. Um, we've drafted proposed legislation. Um, we've collected stories from our community and our families, and we've held press conferences to raise awareness of the issue and about the you know the thousands of lives that are being negatively impacted by lack of access to healthcare. Um, besides C Foodie, other organizations that are involved in this is obviously Universal Healthcare, Planned Parenthood, Make the Road and a whole bunch of other organizations that I'm not gonna mention everyone because I'm gonna miss someone. <laughs> um, yeah, but so we're excited to keep fighting together and keep advocating for Husky Healthcare here in Connecticut. 
And you can go to the, the next slide. There we go. So now we're going to talk about, before we get to the questions, we'll talk about what can you all do. Um, so we know that, you know, this is a big change that we're asking for. The Husky program is a, it's a big program. It's a hard program to change, as many of the advocates on the call know. Um, and we know it's going to take a long time, and we know it's going to take people power to make the changes that we're demanding happen. So we welcome any, any and all folks who are interested to join our campaign and to take action with us. We're not going to win this campaign unless we all come together and fight to make it happen. So we have five action items for y'all. So we're going to go through the, each of the, the five action items. So number one, asking y'all this week, today, if you can, to call the legislative leadership um, to take up the issue of healthcare during the upcoming special session that's likely going to happen um, sometime in, in September. Um, right, so we're in, the, we're in the middle of a global pandemic. It's imperative that legislators you know, address access to healthcare and address access to healthcare for those who, who are currently excluded from, the, from being able to purchase or being able to have access. So here, there's some links. Please go on the link and you know, join us in calling the Leslie of Leadership to demand they, they make this an issue and address it during a pandemic. And we can go to the next slide and I'll, I'll show it to Jonathan. And um, another way that you may be able to help is um, to tweet at your legislators if you have Twitter. Um, and to, um, so we're looking for people to tweet at both the Democratic leadership and also the insurance committee. Um, to demand that the Connecticut legislator take up the issue of healthcare access for immigrant communities um, during the special session. So we really want to pressure them to um, know that there are tens of thousands of undocumented individuals who are going without health coverage during this pandemic, and they need to hear from people, um, you know, all throughout the state that this is something that needs to be passed in Connecticut. And if you go to the next slide, please, I'll throw it back to Camilla. Mm -hmm. Then action number three, and you're getting this hot off the presses. Um, we are doing an action on Friday, September 25th at 6 p.m. in Hartford, um, in front of the governor's mansion, as you can see, um, to, to pressure and urge uh, the governor to take action and to make sure that, or to make Husky accessible to all people, regardless of immigration status. Um, so there's no Facebook event yet, but we'll have one soon, so we you know please put it down on your calendar and, and join us uh, in person. If you feel safe, if you don't feel safe, you're welcome to tweet um, at the governor uh, and ask for, for this to happen because there were families in our communities even. And you go for the next one and I'll throw it back to Jonathan. And a fourth way that um, you may be able to help is to share your story with us. Um, so if you or your um, family have struggled to get at health care um, or coverage because of your immigration status, um, then we would like to hear from you um, because stories um, are the way that like we help convince um, legislators and help build our base um, by knowing like who, by, by sharing people's stories, like that's the most powerful way that we could um, get people on our side. Um, so we are looking to collect stories to deliver to um, the governor on our action this month. And that that Billy right there is a form that you could share with your friends or um, with anyone um, who you think may be able to like share their story. And I will also pass it on to Camilla now. Oh, thank you. So this is the last action. See, you have no excuse not to take an action because there are so many ways that you could take action of us. Um, so the last thing that we have is a petition to the governor. So please sign. Uh, there's a link here. It will also be in the, in the comments and the chats everywhere. Uh, sign the petition to Governor Lamont to urge him to take action and make Husky, as we've been saying, accessible to all regardless of immigration status. Takes 30 seconds, probably less. So that's it for the, the basics and like this, what is the Husky Forum Roots campaign, what we're doing, why we're doing it. Um, I'll throw it back to Rose because I think we're taking some questions now. Yeah, we definitely are. We had a question from Angie who was wondering if 52% of undocumented immigrants are currently uninsured, how did the other 48% manage to get coverage? Good question. So I'll take it and Jonathan, unless you, you want to go, Jonathan, or do you want me to go? Um, you go first if you want to. Okay. Yeah, so, so that's a good question. Um, 
as I'm sure you all know, healthcare access is complicated. Um, a lot of what I should mention that the report that, that came from is um, it's from the MPI, the Migration Policy Institute, right? So they they use um, so I'm not a statistics person, but they use statistics, right, to extrapolate to the whole population. So it's not they didn't go around interviewing everyone in Connecticut, right? They did some math to get the to get an approximation, and that's what that 48 percent is. But how undocumented folks are able to get health insurance in Connecticut is either to an employer or in most cases to a, a family member. So we do have a lot of mixed status families here in Connecticut, right? If a if a spouse is undocumented and a spouse is a citizen or a green card holder, um, if they're married and the legal spouse gets to the employer, the undocumented spouse also gets the, the health insurance. Um, and you know, adjusting your status to marriage is not it's not easy and it's not fast, right? A lot of people in, they can adjust their status even if they're they're married to a US citizen, right? So that takes time. So there are a lot of mixed status families who are able to get health insurance from their partner. Um, the other way is to your employer. If you know a person is able to to have a work permit and be able to you know work legally, they are able to get health insurance to the employer. Obviously, they need a work permit, right? Um, the immigration system is complicated, right? Just because someone is not a U.S. citizen or is undocumented, they could have a temporary work permit that allows them to get employed and allows them to get health insurance. So it's complicated, and the 48% reflects the, the complications in both the immigration system and the healthcare system. So I hope that answered. Jonathan, do you have anything else to add in that? Um, no, you summarized it well, but just to clarify a little bit more on the 52%, um, as Camilla mentioned, it is from a uh, Migrant Policy Institute report. And what they essentially did was that they looked at census data and the American Community Service data. And what they created was uh, like an identifier based on certain um, characteristics. So for instance, if a person had, um, had said that they had a certain type of, um, like let's say, benefit that you could only access if you are a citizen of the United States, then, then if someone had that, then that meant that they weren't undocumented. So they just use different characteristics like that to estimate how many people um, were undocumented or, um, and then based off that, how many people had answered that they did or didn't have insurance, um, just to clarify that a little bit more. There was a follow-up question um, with that. And then we have another question coming in. They're coming in right through. Um, Angie wanted to know, what about someone who is DACA for 15 plus years, but who has kids who are US citizens? So in that yeah. situation. Yeah, so if you have DACA and you're obviously able to be employed, you're able to get health insurance. So full disclosure, I have DACA and I have health insurance to my job. That's how a lot of people are able to get. I'm also probably counted as undocumented, but I have that kind of work permit, right? So that's where some of those numbers also come from. Um, I think you said if they're DACA and then they have U.S. citizen children. So if the children are U.S. citizens and they fit the Husky requirements, they 100% they will be able to get the Husky for kids if the child was, was born here. It does not matter the, the legal status of the parent. Great, thank you so much. And then someone else had a question here. Um, are you looking to expand Husky A, which is for parents, children, and pregnant women, or Husky D, which is for lower income adults, or both? We're, we're looking to expand it um, all, all parts of Husky um, because we believe that regardless of both like your age and your income, um, everyone deserves access to healthcare coverage. Camille, I don't know if you wanna expand on that a little bit more. So, yeah, so the goal, all goal is to expand the whole Husky uh, program, all the letters, which we know is obviously a very big ask, um, but, but that's the goal, right? Because everyone should be able to have access to healthcare. Fantastic. Um, I, have, I have a story. I'm going to like take the moderator's privilege and ask you a question that I have is, do you have a story on how this issue is impacting your community? So many. <laughs> so we're not going to share everything. Um, so I won't share no names. Um, Connections for Dream, right? We work with undocumented youth and families. Uh, and we've been hearing for, for years, right, that access to healthcare is a huge issue for the youth that we work with and, and their families. 
uh, just in the past, you know, few months as we've been, you know, getting more public about this or uh, youth leaders have been telling us like that they, they and their families don't go to the doctor. Um, they can't get glasses and they need glasses because they can't see in school when they were in person because they don't have eye insurance or vision insurance. Um, we've heard stories of, you know, people's parents not going to the emergency room when they clearly needed to go to the emergency room because they don't have health insurance and, um, you know, scared about how much a visit to the emergency room would cost, right? So people try to, um, I don't say self-medicate at home, but I guess that's the appropriate term, right? They try to self-medicate at home and they try to wait as as long as, as, long as possible. Um, one of our youth um, in a meeting that we had in January talked about how her, her father had a heart issue. He eventually end, ended up having a heart attack, um, but they did not go to the to the hospital until it was well into it, until they could not hold it anymore. Uh, it was clear that something was wrong because they were scared of how much it'll cost. So that's the choices that people are making. People are like, you know, weighing the the cost to the severity of the risk to their health. So it's really a life and death issue when it comes right down to it. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I, I, I personally for like my, my own family and uh, our experience with COVID um, during the, like the initial height of it around, I want to say March, April, um, my dad ended up having COVID. Um, and because of like everything that was happening, we, we had to quarantine for two whole weeks, right? Um, and for context, like there's five of us in our household and four of us um, don't have insurance because we're undocumented. And um, so we had to have my dad like in his own room. And the scariest part of it, like, like was not knowing if he got much more worse, like if we had to take him to the hospital, how much it would cost, like with, you know, what, like what, what would we get billed for? And it was also scary because like my mom, um, a few years ago, she was having a lot of lung issues um, and we will go to the community health center to see if they could like help her out. But because she doesn't have health insurance, um, they could never send her to like a specialist or send her to get more, ex more better treatment that we would actually be able to find out the issue. So then because it never got resolved, now that COVID is around and then when my dad had, um, had COVID, like, it was very frightening to think, right. what if my mom gets it, like, her lungs, they don't even know what's wrong with her, like, what are they going to do, should she get it, what can we do, um, so it, and I know that, like, my family isn't the only one, um, as Camilla said, like, we hear from our members every day, like, they're still going out to work, and, you know, they're, they're risking it, but they have to be able to provide for their families, because, you know, even outside healthcare coverage and talking about health equity, um, like al also having to work and provide food and pay your, like pay your rent bills, um, like undocumented immigrants also didn't get help with the stimulus check. And so in turn, like undocumented immigrants really, really need a lot of help right now. And especially with gaining access to healthcare coverage. And it is possible because um, Husky itself, I believe, about 40,000 more people enrolled into it um, because of COVID. Um, so it is possible to um, also enroll the undocumented immigrants who do deserve it and need it. I have an interesting question here um, about, does the governor have, and you may not know the answer to this one, but does the governor have special emergency powers during this pandemic that he would be able to do this to be able to open up Husky? Do you think so? Um, I'll give my take on it, Jonathan, if we to give you a take on it. Yes and no. Um, so the, we are under, I'm not sure what the proper term is, but under the emergency orders, and it was extended until February. So the governor does have emergency powers until February. Um, back in May, the governor did extend a little bit uh, the emergency Medicaid um, to cover undocumented people who need treatment for COVID, ta COVID testing and treatment. So, so that was done specifically regarding COVID and under the emergency Medicaid uh, program um, back in May. Um, the question about expanding the, the Husky program administratively, like technically he wouldn't have the power, right? But the issue is the money. The issue is where the money coming from and where are they putting or taking the money from to cover the extra amount of people who would be covered and who would, you know, 
spend money being covered um, under the program. Um, so maybe we have a, a lawyer on here who can give more details, right? But the, the government doesn't have the powers to like create money or like to, you know, al allocate certain portions of the budget in new ways, but they can't shift things around. So the question is, where is the money coming from to, where could the money come from to cover the extra amount of people that would be covered if we open it up to all immigrants? And that, that's the hard question. And, and, to, and to expand a little bit on that, um, Camilla, during um, like the, the PowerPoint mentioned that undocumented immigrants like do pay taxes. And I just wanna like re-highlight that point because right now like undocumented immigrants annually um, provide about 145 million in state and local taxes alone, and then 240, 252 million in federal taxes. So we're already paying into these systems like Husky. And in turn, like we are watching other people get healthcare coverage uh, in a program that we're fund, we're helping fund. And yeah, like we don't have access to it. So when, when the question comes up about like, how could we afford this? Um, in truth, like the respondent is, you would be able to afford it even less had it not been for undocumented immigrants. Like you would have less people covered by, by Husky had it not been for our tax revenue that we're providing. Um, so in turn, like we do deserve access to, to Husky. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I just wanted to add on to that point too. Um, I have, I do have, um, do you feel that immigrants put themselves at risk by getting medical attention? Do people, or is that at least a fear in the community that getting medical attention could lead to something as bad as deportation? Camilla, do you want to answer this one first, or? Yeah, I can, I can answer. Um, so, yes, people are definitely scared and concerned, and it's, it, it's a very individual thing, right? It's nothing new. People have been scared to like access um, access benefits, even though healthcare shouldn't be a benefit, but people are concerned because they think they'll need to out, out their status, um, especially in the last few years with the, the public charge that was initiated by this administration, but not fully followed through on. Um, people are very concerned about this idea of a public charge that may prevent them from being citizens in the future. Um, so that is a valid fear that people have, but it's not fully grounded in reality. Um, so seeking access to medical care will not expose you to ICE. It won't put you in danger of, you know, being under the public charge. Um, although the fear is understandable, the concerns are not grounded in reality. So it is completely safe to, you know, access medical care if you need it. Um, it's safe to, to seek it out. Um, hospitals fall under, if we have the proper term is, I'm blanking, sensitive locations. Hospitals are sensitive locations and supposedly, ICE cannot like go in there unless they have a reason, but like, you know, ICE tends to do what they want. Uh, but hospitals are a sensitive location. So it, it is safe to seek medical care, but obviously people are still very much concerned because they hear rumors, they hear stories and people get, people get scared. So I, I have another question that just came in. Does the joint federal state funding of Husky cause any problems? Can the federal government restrict eligibility? Um, I, I take and try to answer this one. Um, if I if I'm remembering correctly, um, I think uh, what we're trying to do in in Connecticut is similar to what California did with their um, with their version of Medicaid, and um, what they did was that. Uh, they only use state funding to fund access to um, their their version of Medicaid for undocumented immigrants there. Um, so we want to do the same thing here um, before for all, um, which would mean that we wouldn't be using federal money to expand Husky for immigrants. We would solely be using um, Connecticut tax revenue money. And so that way we won't have to encounter any barriers that might come with having to reach out to the Trump administration who won't help us. Um, Camilla, yeah. I to add to that one? No, yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah, under federal law, uh, like you cannot use federal funds to to give, you know, aid or under the under the Medicaid program, you can't do that. So the funds will need to come from the state of Connecticut. Um, this could be changed in a future administration, but it will definitely not be changed in this current administration. 
Um, so for now, it will need to be fully funded by the state of Connecticut. Thank you so much. I have, I have one last question I think here for, um, oh, I actually have uh, two last questions is how can you, how can we protect, protect, like say the Husky program were to be opened up, what's one, you know, what are ways that we can protect um, un undocumented people from having to out their status in some way? Um, and, and maybe be fearful of doing that. Do you think, of, can you think of like any ways that like we could address that? Yeah, so I think like the biggest thing is make sure that people uh, feel safe in applying for the program, right? Um, a lot of it is in the logistics of it, right? You, it'll be better if it's not like a separate program and a separate application, but then like it will apply the same way, right? And there's no way for you to out yourself as undocumented just by seeking out the, the application. Um, so, so that's one thing. Um, another way is make sure that, you know, in whatever mechanism this gets passed, that there's language in there that protects, um, protects the, Five is not the word I'm looking for, but protect the information, there we go, of, of the people who, who did apply. Um, it's always a concern, right? The information could be shared and there's some kind of, you know, request from the federal government, but that, that's not likely. Right here in Connecticut, we have the Drive Only program, which gives licenses to undocumented people. When, when that was first proposed, right, people were very concerned that undocumented immigrants would not, would not apply for it because the license clearly identifies you as undocumented um, and that there will be a list, but people still apply, right? Because people need to drive. I think in the same way that people will still apply because people need healthcare. You just need to make sure that the state of Connecticut is providing the protections on the back end to make sure that the, the information is, is secure and protected. Great, thank you so much, Camilla. Thank you so much, Camilla and Jonathan for all of this information you've been giving us. And thank you so much for coming on and explaining this to our audience. I do have um, the last question, I think, um, is a great way for you to reiterate all of the great actions that people can take is what can folks do right now to get legislators to make this issue a priority in special session? I'm sorry, can you repeat the question? <laughs> sure, absolutely. What can folks do right now to get legislators to make this issue a priority in the upcoming special session that was supposed to be happening in September, where the legislature is supposed to reconvene? Yeah, um, so um, in, in the slides, like um, we had mentioned several ways to take action and just to reiterate some of them, um, you could tweet at your legislator, you could send a petition, sign a letter, um, help us collect stories. Um, and so that way um, they hear from um, people all across the state that this is something that, um, you know, not just healthcare advocacy or immigrant rights groups are pushing for, that it's um, like everyone who is, um, who wants to see um, Husky for, for all be passed. Yeah, I agree. This one will forward unless legislators hear from the community that this is one we want. I see y'all in the chat, y'all support this. <laughs> so, you know, give your legislators a call and let them know of your support. Because um, if we don't do that, they won't know, especially during this time of social distance, we can't see them, right? So we gotta call them and we gotta email them. And I guess um, I do want, I guess I, I, this is a good opportunity for uh, Universal to mention that we're actually hosting a tweet storm tomorrow to do exactly that to target uh, the House and Senate uh, legislatures, sorry, the House and the Senate and the legislature. Um, and that is going on from one to two o'clock tomorrow. And I can drop a link in the chat to a little bit more information about that. And one of the asks we're going to be elevating is um, healthcare coverage for undocumented people and immigrants. So, Unless you guys have anything else you want to make sure to add, anything you want to say in closing, I think we've come up on time. Uh, we're hitting our, our mark here. So um, any last words, Camilla and Jonathan? I would just say um, 
um, first, thank you for um, you know sticking around with us and um, listening to us share about Husky for Immigrants. And um, please do make sure to um, you know like whether where you're tweeting at it or signing the petition. Um, every person um, counts, especially when we're trying to build um, a lot of support for it. Um, so please, please do uh, make sure to take one of the the action steps, and please make sure to follow us whether it's at um, Connected Students for a Dream or. Um, Universal Healthcare Foundation for more updates um, because we know that this is going to be um, an uphill battle and um, you know we are prepared to fight for this for years and as long as we have to um, because we at the end of the day we are going to make um, Husky for Immigrants happen um, because we do want our people to get healthcare coverage and we want everyone in Connecticut to have access to healthcare coverage. Um, so thank you for, for being here and listening to, um, to our to our stories. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you everyone. I'll just add, put my email in the chat if you want to contact me because you want to get involved in the campaign, please do. We'll loop you in and how you can take uh, bigger actions. Yeah, I just want to mention um, if anybody does need to get in touch with Camilla or Jonathan and wants their email address, you can always email um, myself. Oh, Camilla, you did put it in the chat. Oh, thank you so much. And I just want to let people know that you, everybody on the Zoom will be receiving an email with all of the actions that you can take so that if you wanted to forward that to friends or um, anybody else who you think would support this effort, um, please do. Um, so I think that that brings us to it. I'm going to leave the chat open just a minute just so people can grab their links and their information. And uh, um, and I think we're all, we're done. Thank you guys, everybody for joining us. Thank you, Camilla and Jonathan for sharing your stories and Universal is proud to be part of the coalition to the Husky for Immigrants Coalition. And we're excited to continue to do work and we're glad that so many of you is supportive. Um, so thank you again, everyone. I'm gonna break, break us out and uh, talk to everyone soon. <laughs>